This is our anniversary. 25 years. Stand to your feet and let's give God a hand clap of praise. I am excited because I've been here the 25 years. I have seen the ups and the downs, but I thank God. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? He has the power over time. He has the power over whatever it is that you have or going through. One of the things that God gave me, he said, this is just not another service, like Bishop said. This is our conference. And not only that, but this is the closing of our conference. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Not only that, we've been rooted with the fruit through the connection of our community. Not only that, get ready, get ready, get ready for tonight. We're going to be inspired. We're going to be motivated. We're going to just go even higher tonight. We want to thank God, Bishop. We thank you for the 25 years of your sacrifice. Thank you, Uni, for 25 years of celebrating and through the ups and the downs. We thank God today. Thank you, Lord. Not only that, we thank God for uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and 58 said, Brethren, be ye rooted, grounded, steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord. For you know that your labor, even when you're at the exhausting point, that your labors are not in vain, that it is a purpose that God is working out in your life. It is in him. Not only that, but we thank God that he has the power over time. So we thank God for the time that he has given us, 25 years, so his hand of protection has been on us. We thank you. Thank you, Lord, for that. Psalms 37, 3 and 4 tells us, trust in the Lord and the good and do good. Dwell in the land and feed off of his faithfulness. How many know that he's been faithful? He's been so good and so faithful. Hallelujah. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. So we thank God. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you all the praise and all the glory tonight. We lift this service up to you in the name of Jesus. You've been so good to us, Father. We thank you for our bishop that no sickness, no disease, no poverty, no lack, no fear, no oppression has no power. He's been that servant. He's had that sacrifice. We thank you tonight, Father God, as the praise team are going to pour out of their heart, as Bishop Brother Walker is going to pour out of his heart. Lord, we hear to receive 25 years of just celebrating with you thank you for your hand of protection thank you you've been so good thank you we love you we know that you're with us walk with us through us in us and around us touching his wife and his family touching them and the sacrifices they have to make in this 25 years we thank you unity give God some praise thank you unity thank you Lord for covering unity with your blood thank you for everyone that's here everyone that's on their way. Father, we give you all the praise and all the glory. Give you all the praise. All we can say is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Sometimes we can't do that but wave our hand. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We know that you're with us. You know that you walk with us and talk with us. And all these things, Father, we thank you that you're here and your presence is here. Your anointing is here in the building. Healing is in the building. Salvation is in the building. Whatever you need is in the building. Hallelujah to your name. And all these things we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and thank God. Hallelujah to your name. Come on and make some Holy Ghost crazy noise. Unity Church, come on. Come on, shout to the Lord with the voice of triumph. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Clap your hands. We celebrate you, King of Kings. We celebrate you, Lord of Lords. We acknowledge your presence in this building. Come on. Let the Redeemer of the Lord say so in this place. Somebody shift the atmosphere and sound the alarm of praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. We praise you, great Jehovah, because you are truly worthy of all glory, honor, thanks, and praise. Come on, clap your hands one more time and celebrate our King. Hallelujah, Jesus. Look at your neighbor tell him, neighbor. God's about to do something special for me and you. Come on, tell him. I need you to help him. I need you to help me praise him. Clap your hands. Come on. And why you do it? Put a smile on your face. We come pressing in your presence and we leave our hands behind us. Somebody lift up a sound of praise. Come on. Play it again. Come on, clap your hands. Unity Church makes some noise and celebrate with 25 years. Hallelujah.
If you know the place where you stand, God's getting ready to do something greater. I know it's been good, but when greater is available, God, I need you to send me more. I find somebody close by you and tell them God's getting ready to do it. Tap another name and say, he's getting ready to do it. Somebody shout like an old preacher say, right now. Welcome to Utah, our 25th anniversary. We're so thankful for all of you. Go hug somebody. Go greet somebody. Take a selfie with them. Come on, do it right now. Give me just something funky, y'all, for a second. As we celebrate all that God has done. Come on, tag the church when you get a chance at Unity CF. seated in the presence of God again. I'm so excited, y'all. I'm so excited tonight. I know it's a Tuesday night, but it's going down on a Tuesday. Amen. And I'm excited about it. My bishop, my pastor, my spiritual father is in the house. Y'all go crazy for my pastor like you went crazy for your pastor. Come on, shout for my pastor right now. Bishop Joseph Warren Walker III. I'm so excited, man. I'm just grateful uh, for him, the relationship, uh, the poor. Amen. When I say the poor, he's constantly pouring into me. We sat down today, had a great time of just, uh, just fellowship. And as soon as we sat down, boom, he, the faucet turned on. He just started pouring. And I just, it was just a cup just to capture all of what it was that he was communicating. I'm so thankful for him. Amen? Amen. Y'all, let's give God praise for my brothers who are in the house and my sister. I thank God for them. Y'all give it up for my brother Overseer Elton Johnson. Y'all, let's celebrate him. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. Amen. I got him to not wear a tie tonight. I did good. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Y'all give it up for Overseer Pitchford. Amen. That's the big brother. Amen. And thank you, man. Appreciate you so, so very much. And Overseer Frank Oliver. Y'all know him. Amen. Amen. But listen, I thank God for this man of God. He pastors my auntie, so I really appreciate him. Amen. Let's give God praise for Bishop Andrew Turner. He's in the house. Amen. Love you, sir. Amen. Amen. We thank God for Pastor Raymond Chandler, a son of the house. Amen. And his wife, First Lady Chandler. We love you. Appreciate you so very, very much. And this woman of God came all the way from San Bernardino. Today is her birthday. And we, she just said, I'm just going to come. I want to hear my bishop. I know it's my birthday, but what better gift than to listen to my presiding bishop. Amen. So thank God for you. Pastor Sarah Morris is in the house. Thank you so very much. Somebody say happy birthday. 
We celebrate you. We thank God for all of you. Amen. Am I missing anybody? Amen. Hey, TK. You would be sitting by mom and dad. That's, it, it's my big brother, y'all. It, it's, it's family over there. That's why, yeah. Let's give it up for Pastor TK Carroll. Amen. First thing, Carroll. We thank God for you. Love you, sir. Amen. Appreciate you so very, very much. All right. Don't, don't tell on me because I know you, you over there, but tell off on me on some things. I know, I know, amen. But I love you all. Unity, y'all give love to yourself. Come on, let's give God praise for the team and everybody's work. Amen. Uh, hey. co pastors here. Y'all celebrate co pastors my dad. Give it up for first ladies in the house, amen. Amen. Uh, as Bishop Irvin would say, Lottie, Dottie, and everybody. All right, cool. Uh, at this time, um, I want to make sure I bring up Mama Tana. Is she here? Is she here right now? Come on, Mama Tana. Come on. Let's give it up for Mama Tana. She is going to come at this time real quick. Amen. And I thank God for her. She's a former councilwoman of District 3. Right, yeah. And so, amen. She, she went ahead, retired, let them, let them have it. Amen. But I thank God for this woman of God. Uh, she represents Compton for how many years? 40, 45 years working for the city of Compton. Amen. Good evening, Unity. As my bishop said, I am Tana McCoy, former councilwoman. I now serve on the board of directors of the Metropolitan Water District, as well as the board of directors for the Mosquito Board. But other than being a mother and a grandmother of 11, I am a member of Unity. And I want you to know that Unity has my heart. Um, I'll give you just a short story. Um, 18 months ago, I had a quadruple bypass. And so what got me through is the morning of my surgery, First Lady called me and she prayed with me. And so as I was recuperating, I looked up and in walks in the door walks my bishop. And you know, that tells you the commitment and love that he has for his congregation. For the, We're just not parishioners, we're his family. And he's my family. And so I couldn't let this day go by without um, presenting him with a commendation. I contacted the mayor and they have council meeting tonight, so she couldn't be here but I had her prepare this commendation for Unity Church 25th year celebration on behalf of Mayor Emma Sharif, the City Council, the great citizens of Compton. We would like to extend a heartfelt congratulations to Unity Church on 25 years of service in the City of Compton. Your commitment to providing spiritual guidance, support, and community outreach has has had an invaluable contribution to the city of Compton and its residents. Best wishes and continued success are hereby extended from the city of Compton and is presented on this 16th day of April, 2024, and it's signed by Mayor Cherie, Councilwoman Deidre Duhart, Councilman Andre Spicer, Councilman Jonathan Bowers, and Councilwoman Lily Darden. Bishop, we love you. We love Compton too, y'all. We thank God for him. Amen. Appreciate him so very, very much. And again, we're so excited, amen, about all the things that God continues to do. Well, people, God, one more time, let's give God praise for the opportunity that we're getting ready to have. That opportunity is to give, amen. Giving is so significant. And um, we've come through so much and we've done so much. Um, and we've been um, in this conference for the past three days. And God has richly moved in many ways than what we could even imagine. Um, again, again, we have not put much pressure as relates to the giving because unity has been has done an exceptional job in giving, uh, making sure things have been well. But again, today I want to make, want to put out a challenge to those of you. Amen. I need, I need roughly about 25 of you, if not 30, uh, to stand with a seed of $100. I need 25 of you that will stand with me. I'll, I'll be, yeah, I'll be there.
like in um, making that one. Thank you, Mama. Thank you. Come on and bring that seed. Let's be a blessing. Come on, bring it, bring it, bring it for a blessing. Freely, freely give. Amen. Giving digitally, still bring. Tap that basket. Yeah, tap it with us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. She's giving for two. Amen. Thank you so much. God is good. Now, those of you that are not giving at this moment, just go ahead and clap your hands for those who are. We have, I believe, I believe God. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Your opportunities get ready to come. We thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. But again, we want to make sure we clear this budget. Amen. And take care of it. Somebody say, it's already done. Shout it again. It's already done. Amen. Now, the rest of us, listen, those of you that are planning on to give, amen, if you need an offering on the low, please raise your hand. We want to make sure we serve you. Those who are giving right now, here's a QR code. I want you to lift it in the air if you did prepare to give that seed right now, wherever you are. Lift your hand, lift your hand. You have the seed, you have the seed. Come on. All right. Father, bless all of this in Jesus' name for the gifts and the giver belong to you. We thank you, God, that you are sustaining and keeping us as we continue in you. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray. Amen. Those of you that didn't have a chance to give, come on, freely give. Wherever you are, just walk up. Come on, come on, come on, bring that seed now. Even if you gave digitally, bring your phone, tap the basket. Let's be a blessing. Come on, come on, come on. We thank God for all of our givers. We thank God. Come on, freely, come on, wherever you are. Come on. Hallelujah. good to you. Come on, let's clap our hands right now for the time of giving. Appreciate you. Amen. Let us now pray attention to the screen and we'll get ready to uh, receive the information from there and get ready for our bishop. Amen. Unity Church, God bless you. This is your presiding bishop and you know I am so excited to welcome you to the full gospel conference that's happening in July of 2024. It's going to be amazing. And you know what? I already know your bishop is making an appeal. I thank God for him and Lady Charlotte. You guys mean so much to me. And I want to see you in New Orleans, Louisiana. Let me tell you something. Western Pacific region is so awesome under the leadership of this great man of God. And because he sits on the council, it's so important that you all come by the hundreds and support us in this effort. So start making plans now to meet us in New Orleans, Louisiana. I want to see my family in New Orleans, Louisiana. I want you to register, fullgospelbaptist.org. Bishop Joseph Warren Walker III is senior pastor of the historic Mount Zion Baptist Church of Nashville, Tennessee, and presiding bishop of the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship International. In 1992, Bishop Walker began his pastorate at Mount Zion with 175 members. Presently, the ministry has grown to over 30,000, with four physical locations and virtual campuses around the world. Bishop Walker's educational journey includes earning a Bachelor of Arts degree from Southern University, a Master of Divinity degree from Vanderbilt University, and a Doctor of Ministry degree from Princeton Theological Seminary. Beyond his role in the pulpit, he eagerly serves the community, investing in colleges and college students, busing students from over nine universities. He is the first chair appointed to the Board of Trustees for Tennessee State University and a board member of Citizens Savings Bank and Trust. 
A multifaceted individual, Bishop Walker's impact extends beyond the church walls. He is a revered teacher, humanitarian, businessman, and community leader whose inspirational messages have made him a sought-after orator in diverse leadership spaces. As a prolific author, his best-selling books, including Leadership and Loneliness and Restored at the Root, showcase his depth of wisdom. In collaboration with his wife, Dr. Stephanie Hale Walker, a neonatologist, they co-authored the inspiring book, Becoming a Couple of Destiny. As global leaders and professionals, they skillfully navigate the delicate balance of ministry and careers while placing a high priority on family life. Their engaging journey is shared with a global audience through the po healer, healer, healer. I feel my hope coming down.
guarantee that I make it home tonight. And yet while I have this atmosphere and the privilege to give God my best, somebody give him healthy fruit and sacrifice on your lips. Come on all over the building. Come on, let him respond to your call. God, respond to our worship. Respond to our offering. happy. I am so proud of him. Would you help me honor your pastor, Bishop Johnny Withers. Come on, let's thank God for him. Love you so much, man. To the woman right by his side, I honor you, ladies and gentlemen. I love you so much. Mom and to everybody, we thank God. I tell you, I'm so excited to all of these great pastors. They've already been acknowledged. I won't insult your intelligence, but I thank God for this great gathering of leaders tonight. I'm honored by your presence. Thank you for being here. Come on, let's thank God. Y'all got somebody, when I tell y'all unity, y'all got, got a, a real pastor? I mean, no, for real. A real, for real. Amen. I just, I just, just love his heart. I love he's always, he's just oozing out unity. He's talking about y'all everywhere and what God is doing. And I just see his brain moving all the time. He's trying to just keep going from glory to glory. And I honor God for the anointing on his life and for the heart that he has for the people of God. Many are called, but few are chosen. Y'all got one of the chosen ones. Come on, one more time. Let's honor him. Thank you so much, uh, of course. I certainly appreciate you for uh, the video earlier. I hope you all will join us in New Orleans. We're so excited about the Full Gospel Conference taking place, and uh, it's going to be amazing. And I need to see you, Unity. I need to see you all in New Orleans uh, for our conference in July. And uh, I am excited about what God is doing. Oh, yes, 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 yes. 
Want you to make sure you stay connected to your presiding bishop now. Follow me on uh, Instagram at Joseph Walker Three, and uh, I'm gonna be bragging about y'all tonight. Amen. I fly out tonight and gotta go over to D.C., but I'm gonna be bragging tonight about unity because I just came here. My mind is blown. Y'all are doing it, and I thank God for this praise team, these minstrels. Come on, let's thank God for them. As a word from the Lord tonight, I want to take you over to 2 Samuel chapter 9 tonight. 2 Samuel chapter 9. 2 Samuel chapter 9. Amen. 2 Samuel chapter 9. I want to focus in uh, a few verses here. Uh, the Bible says, And David said, Is there yet any left in the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of Jonathan's sake to him? And that was in the house of Saul, the servant whose name was Ziba. And then they called to him unto David the king and said to him, Are you Ziba? He said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any in the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said to the king, Jonathan hath a son which is lame on his feet. And the king said to him, Where is he? And Ziba said to the king, Behold, he is in the house of Mekur, the son of Amiel in Lodabar. Look down at verse number 13. Your Bible says, So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he did it continually at the king's table and was lame on both of his feet. Amen. I want you to look at somebody and just tell them, it's your time to be at the table. Yeah. It's your time to be at the table. One of the things that I've discovered about God is that he is, he is taking us from glory to glory. Nothing happens in our lives by accident. Everything that he allows, it serves a purpose. Whatever appears to be in your life to destroy you is actually to develop you. God is in the business of maturing us, developing us, and even when difficulty and uncertainty befalls us, God takes it and he uses it for our good. When you reflect over your life, you have to testify that all of it worked together for your good. You learn how to thank God for the ups and the downs, the ins and the outs, because you begin to recognize it was a part of the journey. And that's what life is. It is a journey, right? It is, it is getting me to a specific place that God has ordained for my life. I don't get to choose that place. God chooses it for me. So oftentimes, we often realize that scripture, that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. We think that that's linear. We think that God is just taking us this way. But actually, that text really suggests that God is taking us up stairs. One step here is ordered, and then God says, you're ready for the next step, then he takes you here. If you're ready for the next step, then he takes you there. He does not order you to another dimension until you have been prepared for where you are. And so God takes us to these places he has preordained for our lives because we recognize that God has a plan for us, a purpose for us that is being lived out in us. And so as a consequence, we begin to realize then God is up to something. And at, at that moment, you begin to realize it is God's intent then to get us to places of destiny. That's destination. There is origination and then there is destination. In between origination and destination, there is frustration, irritation, agitation, <laughs> hateration. Contemplative resignation. But if you hang in there, you'll make it to the destination. It does not come without frustration, but you will make it to the destination. And so it is God's intent then to get us to a place He has preordained for us. And so I want to suggest today that God then is not in the business of getting us into stages some people live their lives for stages and I, you know you have to give them their benefit they do because some people like stages stages are for entertainment and that's what stages are they are for entertainment and people who like stages depend upon the applause of people because the applause of people affirm them bring them value it reassures them that what they do their act 
their gig is worthy of applause, but God is not in this season trying to get you to a stage. Some people like some people like platform singers. Platforms are uh, they feed egos. Platforms give you a sense of importance when you are on a platform. It seems to uh, feed your need to be needed. That's why some people will fight you for a seat. People will want the VIP badge, the special parking space, because people like platforms because it makes them look important. But when you are a child of God and you are a servant of God, you're not interested in platforms. You will sit in the back. You don't need a badge. You'll praise God wherever they put you, even in a corner in the overflow. Might I suggest to you tonight that God is not in this season interested in getting you to another platform. What God is interested in, and I believe this is a word for us tonight, is that God is interested in getting you to a table. You see, the difference between a stage and a platform and a table is that a table is where the deals are made. The table is where transactions occur. See, if you're not at the table, you're probably on the menu. It's not just some head of them head. God tonight is trying to get somebody to places of influence. He's trying to get you to a place where you can make decisions, a place where economy will flow in your life. He's trying to bring you to a place that's going to change the trajectory of your life. And I need you to know tonight, the reason why God sent me here tonight is because God's about to take unity and bring you to the table. I need you to look at somebody tonight and tell them, I'm going to the table. I'm, I'm going to the table. I'm not here to entertain nobody I'm not here trying to look important Lord just get me a seat at the table I just want to be where the deals are made I want to be where the glory is get me to the table and so when God does it he, he does it in his time right he has a way of doing it at his time and God's time works like this and King David King David comes to his throne and it is customary when a king assumes the throne, he annihilates the previous administration that King David is looking for someone. Uh, David asks a question. It's a piercing question in the text. He says, is there anybody left in the house of Saul that I may show kindness to? The king's servant, watch it carefully, the king's servant, his name is Ziba, he comes to David and says, king, there is one. There is one, uh, he is in the house of Amiel. He is over there uh, in Lodabar. But king, I need to tell you something. He is a cripple. Uh, he is lame on both of his feet. Uh, it is there where king, the king says to Ziba, he says that I want you to tell him, go get him. I want you to get him. I want you to tell him uh, that the king wants to see him. Now, it is interesting because you must understand a little thing about, a few things about Mephibosheth, because in order for this narrative to make sense, you really have to go deeper to understand how Mephibosheth ended up in the place where he was. It really starts out like this. You must understand that his life was one birth out of discord uh, because the discord of his life was that he was born during a time of war and a war he had nothing to do with. And so as a consequence, now his life has been consumed with the warfare of other people and uh, he's been surrounded by chaos. He's been surrounded by trauma that had nothing to do with him. So he grows up in an environment that is skewed and now he must fight through it his entire life. I'm talking to somebody right now now, you grew up in situations that were not ideal and sometimes you can come up in an environment where you were surrounded by other people's issues and surrounded by trauma but you don't realize that even in the midst of it God still has his hand on your life oh, wait a minute wait a minute he is he is not only in a place of, of, of discord but what is also important to understand he has been denied he has been denied parental guidance because his father, watch this, uh, his father Jonathan was killed while he was young and so now he does not have a father to pour into his life, nobody to guide him and direct him so he is a fatherless child growing up in a place of discord and you must understand this about Mephibosheth because he grows up 
without guidance of a father. And this is important because there are people I'm talking to tonight that were people who were supposed to be in your life in certain areas, but they were not there. But what you discovered is that God is the God of the gaps, that he will show up where people were not. He is a father for the fatherless. He is a mother for the motherless. Who am I talking to up in here today? Stop whining over who wasn't there and give God glory for the folks who were. But, but, but what we discover is that not only was he in a place of discord and a place where he had been denied, but really what is most interesting in this is that he has been dropped. Uh, because the text suggests that while he was uh, an attempt to be rescued out of the war, a nurse with all good intentions took Mephibosheth when he was five years old, took the child, this is going to bless you, she took the child in her hands, somebody say in her hands, took the child in her hands in an attempt to rescue him from the trauma and the war, but she inadvertently dropped him, and as a result, result of her dropping him he now must live with a paralysis nothing that he has done but he is a victim of someone else who mishandled him let me talk to somebody right now the fact is your paralysis your inability you see you must understand his paralysis is not like the paralysis you might see in the new testament when a person is laying on a cot unable to move his paralysis is this he has a a retardation in his progress it takes him longer to get there he is a paralytic he's lame on both feet he can move but it takes him a little longer I'm talking to somebody else you should have the house by now but somebody drop you you should have the degree by now but somebody drop you you should be debt free by now but because somebody drop you you trying to make up for what happened in your past but I came tonight to tell you it doesn't matter who dropped you God is about to pick you up turn you around place your feet on solid ground I come tonight to tell somebody this is your time to be at the table please understand this people of God I want you to hear it. I'm going to turn a corner in a minute. I don't want you to miss this. This is going to bless you. I just want to help you tonight. This is a providential word for your life. Because now, Mosheb when he has been dropped, what do you do when somebody has been dropped? Well, I must place you in a place that constantly reaffirms that you are the cripple. I must put you in a place that constantly reminds you every single day that you were what I said you were. Remember, the king never asked about his condition Ziba offered it up because in the Bible you will discover that people often associated people with their condition have you ever noticed that the woman with the issue of blood blind Bartimaeus why you just can't call me Bartimaeus why you gotta say blind because people always want to put your issue on your name oh I wish I had a witness up in here today but touch your neighbor say I'm not not what you call me I'm who God says I am here it is watch it watch it carefully watch it carefully and so once I name you once I give you the name cripple I must create an institutional reality consistent with the name that I give you I must surround you with the environment that constantly reaffirms and reminds you that you are the cripple one that every day you wake up you got to be reminded that you are the cripple one that you'll never walk so what do I do I put you in a place called Lodabar and what is Lodabar it is a place of no pasture it is a place of hopelessness helpless humanity hurting humanity it is a colony of people who have been thrown away because society didn't know what to do with them and Lodabar is not just a physical location Lodabar can be a mental location some of you when you go on your job it feels like you in Lodabar some of you when you go home it feels like you in Lodabar but I got good news for somebody tonight you better get ready I don't know who you sit next to but I need you to look at somebody tell them you spent your last night in Lodabar oh this is your last night in Lodabar I don't care how long you've been there God is about to snatch you up out of Lodabar and the 
the Bible says, watch it, the Bible says this very clearly and plainly. Your Bible says it, watch it, it catches it, you must grab it out of the atmosphere. The Bible says that the king said to Ziba, you go then and get him. You go down there and you get him and you tell him that the king wants to see him. And wait a minute now, remember the king's request. Is there anybody left? Is there anybody left that I may show kindness to? He did not ask was there anybody qualified? He did not ask was there anybody worthy? He asked was there anybody left? The people I'm talking to tonight I know who you are. You're one of those too. You're one of the ones that can declare tonight I'm one of those who's left that I've been through so much I should have lost my mind but I'm here tonight as a bona fide survivor where are the people that can testify that you've been through more in the last 12 months than some people have been through in the last 12 years tell your neighbor I'm left I'm here and nobody else is here baby I'm here hey after 25 years you're still here wait a minute wait a minute watch it watch it watch it here it is and so the Bible says, watch it carefully. He tells him, you go down there and you tell him that the king wants to see him. And from that moment and that time, listen carefully, time, time. From that moment and that time, there was somebody on a mission looking for a certain person and at a certain time watch how it happens and he goes down there and he literally watch this Mephibosheth has never met Ziba and Ziba has never met Mephibosheth have you ever thought about Ziba has never met Mephibosheth and Mephibosheth has never met Ziba I like that because what it tells me tonight is that somebody I hadn't even met is looking for me to bless me that's why when you come to church with your mean self and you don't want to speak to people you don't know who you sit next to baby you might be sitting next to the person who's on assignment to bless your life and there he is the bible says he gets down there he makes the trick. It's not a short trip. He makes the trick by foot. He goes with the decree from the king. He gets down to Lodabar, the place of hurting humanity, and literally he calls out, Mephibosheth! There's a lot of people in Lodabar. There's a lot of people, mother, hurting in Lodabar. People who have been thrown away. There's a colony of hurting humanity, a place of no pasture, but he is calling a name. Mephibosheth! A lot of people down there, not just Mephibosheth, but other people down there, but he is calling one name. Mephibosheth! because when it's your time God will skip over people just to get to you oh, who am I talking to up in here today people hating on you because God called your name but touch your neighbor and say I can't help it he just called my name hey you better learn when God calls somebody's name and not hate on them all that means they just got out the line and you just moved on up do I have a witness up in here tonight here it is watch it carefully the Bible says to watch it carefully. It goes down there. It's Mephibosheth. 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 Where is Mephibosheth? Where is Mephibosheth? Mephibosheth is in Lodabar. This is just for free. Watch this. This blesses me. Uh, because if Mephibosheth is anywhere else, if he is anywhere else, he would have missed his moment. You see, where is he? He is in Lodabar. He is in a place that is not ideal, but he is there. He has not put a razor to his wrist. He has not OD'd. He has not lost his mind. Even though he is in a place he'd rather not be, at least he's there. Because it gives us a revelation that sometimes, you got to stay in places that may not be ideal but you got to wait until God shows up because sometimes your blessing may not come in a place of ease and comfort your blessing might show up in a place of struggle and strain but you got to stay there look at somebody and say stay there you got to stay there even if they don't like you stay there even if they talk about you stay there even if they malign your name you got to be steadfast and movable always abound in the work of the Lord because your labor will never be in vain. Stay there. Where is he? He's there in Lodabar. And when he hears his name, he comes and says, you're looking for me? Are you Mephibosheth? Yes, that's me. Well, I have a decree from the king. 
Uh, Mephibosheth, I have come down here to Lodabar to tell you that the king wants to see you. And what you will discover, this is going to bless you, is that Mephibosheth does not turn to the people in Lodabar who he has had built community with and he does not ask them for permission nor does he look and say do you think I should go with this stranger because when it's your time you ain't got time to wait on people to give you a permission slip when it's your time you get up and you go get what God has for your life and it is interesting it, 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 it's interesting. I wish I could squeeze it out of this. It is interesting if you notice something. Mephibosheth, this is powerful for me because Mephibosheth, uh, he, he, all he gets is a word. All he gets is a word. Somebody say, just the word. Yes. Say it again. Say, just the word. Yes. Have you ever noticed that whenever God brings about a, a word in our lives, he gives us so many examples that the word brings about deliverance because it does not come to enable us. It comes to empower us. Have you ever noticed that? God gives him a word, and the word always comes to empower us, not to enable us. Have you ever noticed, for example, watch this. Here's the first example. Have you ever noticed that when Jesus went to the tomb of Lazarus, he told the people to roll the stone away? And you ever notice that Jesus never went into the tomb because he doesn't do tomb work? I'm going to help somebody up in here today. What Jesus did is that he hollered from outside the tomb, and he spoke a word into the tomb. And guess what? Lazarus had to hear the word and Lazarus got up from the dead but when Lazarus got up Lazarus had to come forth Lazarus had been mummified you gotta hear me now and so understand something Lazarus had to want it bad enough himself sometime God will raise you up and people think Lazarus came out like this baby Lazarus came out like this and when you want it bad enough that's why when Jesus he came out Jesus says loosen and let him go here is Mephibosheth Mephibosheth watch this he is lame on both feet he does not say I'll go if you help me he does not say I'll go that you bring me a crutch because if you got a word from God you will crawl out you will roll out you have no idea how some people came out of some situations all they had is their name all they had was a dollar to their name but touch your neighbor and say however you come out just come out when you get a word from God you don't make excuses you come out the best way you can here it is here it is watch it carefully it's right here Mephibosheth comes out and I can see it in my mind's eye Turner I can see it in my mind's eye I can see it in my sanctified imagination I can see Mephibosheth standing behind Ziba and Ziba leading him to Jerusalem and I can see Ziba having empathy turning around to Mephibosheth seeing him struggle and pausing and say man you want me to slow down but I can hear Mephibosheth in my spiritual imagination say no man I'm coming. I could hear Ziba saying, you, you show you don't need me to slow down. No, man, don't feel sorry for me. I'm coming. I don't know who this is for, but I need you just to find your one good partner tonight and just tell him I'm coming. I may not have it yet, but I'm coming. Don't feel sorry for me, baby. I'm, I may not have my house yet, but I'm coming. I may not be healed yet, but I'm coming. I may not be debt free yet, but I'm coming. Can you give God glory that you own your way to it? I may not get there when you get there, but I promise you I'm Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. And the Bible says, he gets that. It's an arduous journey. It is such an arduous journey. The revelation is tucked away in the text. It is such an arduous journey for a cripple to get there. 
that when he gets there, you have to assume that he is exhausted because there are moments in which God will get you exhausted. He will get you to a point where you are beyond your human capacity to do anything else but to trust him. He'll show you that man's extremity is God's opportunity. And some of you have gotten to the end of yourself. It's when you have gotten exhausted trusting God, following God. And God says, that's when you're going to meet your miracle. Right when you get to the end of yourself. Right when you say, Lord, I ain't got no more rich. I ain't got no more strength. I ain't got nothing left but to trust you. It's right there where he meets the king. There he is standing before the king, and the king says, Are you, are you Mephibosheth? Your majesty, yes, it is I. Well, I am getting ready, watch this, to bless you for your daddy's sake. You're going to get this in a minute. You're going to get this in a minute. Let me translate it. I'm getting ready to bless you. I'm getting better to show you that your currency is in your connection. Oh, God. <laughs> you you got to understand, Mephibosheth's response to that revelation is like some of you looking at me today. Mephibosheth is like, who, me? I ain't nothing but a dead dog. He views himself like a dead dog because that's what Lodabar was designed to do. The challenge of getting you out of Lodabar was not getting you physically out of Lodabar. It was getting you mentally out of Lodabar because you can be so institutionalized by what you've gone through. You don't even believe that God's got something better for your life. But I need you to touch somebody and tell them you're about to be blessed because of your connection. I, I want you to hear me. Get up, Monsieur Bashir. I'm getting ready to bless you. He doesn't know that his father and David were rogue dogs. He don't know that his father loved David. His father loved Jonathan. He doesn't, they don't, Jonathan and David were rolled off. They, they made covenant one with the other. He doesn't even know that because he was five years old. Remember, he was denied parental advice, but he had no idea because if you don't have anything, if you don't know anything about your history, how can you ever embrace your destiny? Oh, my God. That's why sometimes you got to look back over your life and you got to thank God because what you don't realize, you are going to be a benefactor of the faithfulness of people that went before you. You see, sometimes when you see people blessed, they're not just blessed because of what they did. They're blessed because they had a big mama, they had a papa, they had somebody that was praying for them, somebody that took the time that was on their face and they are benefiting from the faithfulness of a generation that went before them. Somebody ought to give God glory for them. My assignment is almost done. My assignment is about connection. Unity. You, you, you are connected. Okay. I, I have to say it. I we, we, we often hear, hey, this is my pastor, this is my spiritual father. We think that that's just a relationship between me and him. You don't realize that if I am his pastor, if I am his spiritual father, that means that the covering and the oil that is on my life, it is upon his life. Watch this. So if that is the case, then the oil flows down. So as a consequence, whatever you stand under is what you understand. Your mindset your livelihood because your currency is in your connection. Let me help you understand something. That's why I, I knew he was going to get a doctorate degree because that's what he stands under. I'm trying to help somebody up in here today. I know this church is debt free and going to be debt free because that's what you stand I'm trying to help somebody. I know this church is going to be blessed in the city and blessed in the field and blessed going in and blessed coming out because that's what you... I know this church is going to be healthy and you're going to live prosperous lives because that's what you... 
I hope you can give God glory for that. And so as a consequence, I came tonight to release an anointing of connection. I have come to tell you what King David told Zippa and what he told Mephibosheth. Come on up to the table now because just like that, from verse 1, we met him. He was in Lodabar. By verse 13, the boy is right there at the king's table. And I come today to tell somebody God is about to bring unity to the table. God's about to bring your family to the table. He's about to bring your business to the table. He's about to bring your money to the table. I need you to grab somebody by the hand, look them right in the face, and tell them I'm coming tonight to snatch you out of Lodabar. Tell them it's time for you to get to the table. It's time for us to get to the table. It's time for us to act like we at the table. It's time for you to walk like you at the table. It's time for you to talk like you at the table. It's time for you to praise like you at the table. I wish I had a witness up in here today. Look at one more neighbor, look him right in the face and tell him you wouldn't believe what God just did. Tell him everybody that gave up on me, everybody that talked about me, everybody that laughed at me is going to have to take it back because God just prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Don't wait till the battle is won. Somebody shout right now. Why don't you go find three people, high five them, tell them welcome to the table. Welcome to the table. Influence is coming in your house. Unusual blessings are about to hit your house. Uncommon favor is about to hit your house. We at the table tonight. taught me what your mother taught you. Listen, how to have table manners. Listen, when you at the table, da, 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 da. don't you do nothing until you thank the Lord for what you are about to tell somebody say this praise it's a what I'm about to receive. I need somebody to just go on and take a lap tonight and just say this praise, uh, this dance uh, is for what I'm about to receive. Hey! 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 For the house, for the land, for the deal. Hey, I'm about to receive. Connection. Connection. Listen to me. Unity. Your. Hear me well when I tell you this. I want y'all to hear me well when I tell you. Your blessing is a direct result of your connection. ever get this in your spirit if you can ever let stop letting load of our people mess up your blessing and just recognize that your blessing is tied to your connection tonight here's what I want you to do this man 25 years building serving faithfully trusting God we honor you man of God we thank God for you man of God come on 
Here's what I need you to do tonight. I want you to do this. For me, it's covering. Tonight, I want you to get your first seed at the table. Let me tell you something. I, Lodabar is, is a mindset. When, when Mount Zion got to the table, let me tell you something. You know that video about us giving hundreds of thousands and, you know what I mean? We give millions of dollars. We, we raised a million dollars in one Sunday and gave it all away. People, people buying folks houses and cars. That's such a spirit of generosity. You know where it comes from? You know where it comes from? Getting people out of Lodabar mentality. We learn how to sow our way to it. I said we sow our way to it. And tonight, I want you tonight because I'm his pastor. And I know how selfless he is. I know what he gives to so many. He thinks about you before he thinks about himself. But tonight, I want y'all to help spoil this man of God because as God does it for him, guess who's next? Woo, tell somebody say, I'm at the table, I'm at the table. I want you tonight, I want you even if you're watching me virtually, I want you to get a seed. I want you to get be led by the Spirit of God. I'm going to start, I'm bringing this seed. I'm starting this offering with $1,000 right now. I'm starting it with $1,000. I'm doing it tonight. I want you to get a seed in your hand. I want whatever that is for you. I don't know. I don't know what that means for you. But if, if you at the table, everything changes. I don't give load of our offerings no more. I give table offerings. I, have, I, I don't even have load of our conversations because I have table talk. You're going to be, you going to leave here and somebody going to be talking crazy. But like, I don't, I don't have those conversations. And unless you're at the table, I can't talk to you. So there's a mindset. I want you right now, even as you text the information right there tonight, even as you, I don't know how y'all do it, y'all know how y'all bless your past. I want y'all to do that right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for a ministry that you have shifted to the table. For the anointing that rests upon my life, upon this man of God's life, upon this ministry, I thank you that tonight something supernatural is shook and shifted, and I give you glory that we are at the table now. In Jesus' name, receive this seed as we sow it tonight. Our first seed at the table. We give you glory. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, I want you to bring it. I want you to bring it off here. However you're going to do it, I want you to do it now. Come on, come on. I love your unity. I love you. I love you. I love you. God, a thunderous applause for my pastor. Now can we just shout right now for the connection that we have? I can't hear y'all. Y'all look, y'all kind of weak. Come on. Shout for the connection. Tap somebody right now. So I'm at the table. 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 Transactions is happening. I'm at the table. Power is coming and I'm at the table. Deliverance is happening and I'm at the table. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm so grateful, so honored. Amen. What can I say about today and these three days? Can we give God praise for what God has? I am um, just so elated so grateful uh, for uh, this time that has been spent um, God has been good God has been good uh, 
mother often says, you know, you don't, you know, people don't have to be good to you. You know, thank you for um, for being great to me. Thank you for being. Thank you for being great to my family, to First Lady, to my daughter Jaya, to my mom, my dad. I thank you for being great to them. Um, cause some churches are some mean churches, y'all. Some folk be mean, boy. Woo! But I thank y'all for, for being kind. And um, to all of you that have come out these nights, I say thank you. Those who even showed up online, I say thank you. Man, what can I say about this team, these workers, these volunteers? My God, I thank y'all so much. I'm just so honored. Man, thank y'all, even though I get flustered sometimes. I love y'all. Amen, amen. I love y'all. I love y'all. Yeah. Yeah. But again, I thank God for all of you. Um, our first state bishop showed up tonight. And yeah. I'm grateful for you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. I would have never known full gospel was it for him. Amen. He paved the way, laid it out for us, and, you know. Have me running all around the streets of New Orleans, hey man. It's his fault. It's his fault. <laughs> I got I got pictures to prove it. <laughs> but uh, thank God for you, sir. Appreciate you all so much. Um, to all the pastors, I thank you all. Really, really do. Um, really, really, really. Hey man. Hey man. Pitchford, you had me running too, Pitchford. You did. Yeah, you made me. <laughs> Why you carrying that bag? <laughs> <laughs> but no, I love you all. I know y'all tired. Y'all got to go? Y'all got to go to work? Hey, y'all tired? Amen. But no, listen, um, I really, really do, um, I do give honor to everyone. And um, man, Bishop just preached. Man, it was Michael Fisher, LeBrian Friend, Bishop Walker. Pastor Adrian Davis, I know he's watching, man. The master class, y'all miss, woo, that master class. Master class was crazy. Amen. And so we are just so excited. Listen, get ready for UConn 2025. Amen. It's going to be amazing. We're looking forward to it. Um, and we can't wait for you to experience it. Amen. I had the card somewhere, Jonathan. I don't know what I did with it. Oh, there you go. Amen. Um, but again, we thank God for all of you. Um, let's stand to our feet. Let's go. Camera team, media, screen. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Drew. Man. I got spoiled, Jordan. I done got spoiled. I done got spoiled with that. I like it. I like that. I got spoiled. Amen. Amen. And to steal you back. <laughs> Father, it's been a great week thus far. I pray, God, that you have your way. Strengthen us. Let us maintain this connection. That we may be vibrant. That we may be poised and positioned at a table where you are causing transactions of grace, transactions of mercy, transactions of promotion and bountiful blessings to happen right in front of us. Thank you, Father, that we will not depart from that table, but you'll keep us under that covering. Oh, God, that you'll pour into our lives daily, even beyond this moment. Father, we thank you for 25 years. God, we are excited about the next 25 that's ahead of us. Keep us, move in and throughout us, our lives, and let us do as you've called for us to do. Father, bless Unity Church. Take us to another level. In Jesus' name, 
amen hug somebody tell them i love you and can't do nothing about it